Hello. Most of my videos in this series have been about British people, and that's not really surprising. I'm, I'm British after all. I did do a video about a month ago on an amazing inventor from Ohio, Josephine Cochrane, and I've left a link to this video in the description below. I will certainly be returning to talk about other unsung American heroes, but not today. The subject of today's video is Richard Pierce, an, an inventor and aviator from New Zealand, suggested by a viewer. Um, I don't know if you're from New Zealand yourself, but it was a great suggestion. It's a great story. Thank you very much. If anybody else has suggestions for other unsung heroes from wherever, uh, please put them in the comments below. Okay. Let's go. Before we get started, just a quick word about inventors and inventions. It's not unusual for two or more people to simultaneously come up with the same invention. In fact, it's almost inevitable. The infrastructure and society of a country in a certain period of time reaches a point at which new inventions become feasible and potentially profitable. Let's take the example of the telephone. The creation of a network of telegraph cables from the 1840s onwards naturally encouraged people to think about transmitting the human voice instead of Morse code over the wires. The concept was a natural progression of a developed technology and infrastructure. Nearly everybody recognises Alexandra Graham Bell as the inventor of the telephone, but not everybody. Although I'm British, I live in Italy and loads of Italians are convinced that the inventor of the telephone was Antonio Maiucci. Of course, nobody mentions Elisha Gray, another American inventor. In fact, all three of them were doing advanced research on the telephone. The point is that Bell patented his invention first. There were claims of wrongdoing, but as I said, it's perfectly normal for two or more people to have the same idea and work on the same projects. Another example is the invention of the light bulb. Thomas Edison and Joseph Swan both patented their incandescent light bulbs in 1880. Edison in the United States and Swan in the United Kingdom. There was no genuine suspicion of any wrongdoing or copying and naturally a deal was struck between the two inventors. So let's turn to the invention of powered flight. Everyone will tell you that the first flight by a heavier than air powered vehicle was by the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina on December the 17th, 1903 with Orville Wright at the controls. You can see the evidence here. The Wright brothers were amazing, determined and talented men but the development of lighter materials and light weight internal combustion engines meant that they were not the only people working on powered flight. Indeed, unpowered flight, like gliders, had already been developed, so the famous ratchet effect was already in operation. The race was on. So what about Richard Pierce? Richard William Pierce was born on December the 3rd, 1877 at Waitohi Flat, New Zealand. Anybody watching from New Zealand, if you want to correct my pronunciation of that, that place, I'd be happy to hear from you. He grew up on his family's farm and developed an interest in mechanical engineering from an early age. He was the fourth of nine children. His parents invested the bigger part of their limited resources on their el eldest son, Thomas by sending him to Edinburgh to study medicine. Scottish trained doctors were considered the best in the world at that time. This meant that there was little left for Robert's education apart from basic schooling. Because of this, he taught himself about engineering and from an early age was building his own machines and contraptions. His parents didn't forget about him completely, however, and when Robert was 21 in 1898, his father gave him 100 acres, about 40 hectares, of farmland, upon which, over the next 13 years, he established a workshop, 
realised his ideas for bicycles, aero engines, flying machines and a lot more. He also kept a lot of sheep. Busy man. In March 1902, Pierce started working on his own aircraft design. He constructed a monoplane, which featured a bamboo and wire frame covered in fabric. The aircraft was powered by a 12 horsepower engine, which he designed and built himself. On the 31st of March 1903, Pierce made a series of test flights with his aircraft on his farm near Waitohi, South Canterbury. According to eyewitness accounts, he achieved several short hops with some reports suggesting he covered the distances of up to 350 yards, about 320 metres. These flights were significant as they predated the Wright brothers' flight by quite a few months. However, due to a lack of photographic evidence and official documentation, Pierce's achievements did not achieve the widespread attention at the time. His flights were not widely reported and his aircraft was not capable of sustained control flight like the Wright brothers' plane flyer. Despite this, Pierce continued to refine his aircraft design and made further attempts at flight in the years that followed. His later flights were less successful and he faced various challenges which included crashes and damage to his aircraft. Richard Pierce eventually moved away from aviation and focused on other inventions and farming. He patented several inventions including a self-adjusting harrow and a process for extracting oil from flax. He lived a quiet life in New Zealand until his death on July the 29th, 1953. In recent years, there has been a renewed interest in Richard Pierce's contributions to aviation, and he's now widely recognised as an early aviation pioneer. While the exact extent of his achievements remain a subject of debate and some controversy, he is considered by many as a notable figure in aviation history. In the South Canterbury Museum in New Zealand, there is a replica of Pierce's aircraft, paying tribute to his pioneering efforts. What I always find amazing about so many of these early pioneers and inventors is that so few of them were backed by corporations with big budgets. They so often developed their inventions in their spare time. The Wright brothers' day jobs included printing, publishing and bicycle retail, while Richard Pierce kept cheap when he wasn't inventing other things. Amazing people. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, please click the like. And if you haven't done so already, click the subscription and notifications and share it with your friends. Why not? Okay, see you next time.